watching in this hour is how fear can cause paralysis of an entire economy. We're not talking about a little city, we're not talking about a little village, we're not talking about a major city, we are talking about an entire country. See, there are two types of fear. One is an emotion of fear. When you see a snake, you are afraid. Your heart starts to pound. Your blood pressure raises up. You start to sweat. You start to move back from the snake, trying to assess the situation. And that is a healthy fear. We are not talking about a healthy fear, but there is another kind of fear. The fear that paralyzes. Fear that cripples you. Fear that makes you make an irrational decision. Wow. Amen. You would not in your natural mind do it. Now that's what we are seeing many a times. But listen, that is where the Bible says, in Psalm 91, I like the way the scripture puts it. Turn with me to Psalm 91. That's the way the scripture puts it. Let's read that scripture. Psalm 91. Verse 4. Psalm 91, verse 4. He shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Verse 5. You shall not be afraid of the terror yeah. by night. <clears throat> See, there is a fear which is natural, and there is a terror which is unnatural. Terror is what I call paralytic fear. This paralytic fear will destroy. This paralytic fear will cripple you. But here the scripture says, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Tell your neighbor and say, you shall not fear. You shall not fear. You shall not fear. Now, why are you not going to fear? <coughs> Is it because you have great faith? I am covered. Because you are power. Verse 4 says, He shall power you with his feathers. You are power. See, we do not fear because of what God is doing. Amen. Our fear, our lack of fear is not because of our faith. Our lack of fear is because of God's promise. Amen. Amen. Tap your neighbor and say, He has promised. Yes, he has promised. Yes. Hallelujah. You shall not be afraid because my God. The one who reigns supreme, the one who created the heaven and the earth, he says, I'm going to 
I'm going to cover it. 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 I'm going to listen, listen carefully with me. The same kind of plague came to a place called Egypt. And the children were supposed to be killed in that plague. Every firstborn was dying. We didn't know what kind of plague was it that was just selecting the firstborn. And it was killing. The firstborn from Pharaoh to the firstborn of the servant was all dying. But God, oh hallelujah. <laughs> Life would have ceased if it was not for God. But God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, come on, give God the glory. But God did something. He told the Israelites something. He said, I want you to take the blood. Oh, hallelujah. I want you to sacrifice a lamb and take the blood. Guys, you don't need to sacrifice a lamb today because the lamb of God has been sacrificed. You don't need to run to the butcher shop to get the lamb. Like people are running to get toilet paper. <laughs> the God who commanded to use blood has provided the blood. Amen. Between the one who serves me and the one who does not. Yes. 
Yep. As in the time of Egypt. Amen. The leader got it. The leader took the blood. And the leader struck, put the blood on the doorpost. Oh, hallelujah. And the Lord said, When I see the blood, oh, I'll come over you and the plague will not touch you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, your neighbor, this covering is available. Yeah. 
Messiah Amen. that come upon the yeah. hearts of the people. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They will not run when somebody is coughing. No. <laughs> if somebody sniffles, they will not run to the other corner of the store. Star Father, we pray that spirit will be broken. Amen.
giving you the victory. Amen. Even this wire, even before it was ever created somewhere in the hands of the devil, God has already given you the victory. Amen. Who oh, can you shout for me? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You are of God, little children. You are of God, little children. And have overcome them. What have we overcome? The world. What have we overcome? Now let me let me let me let me put a little bit of context here to who what is he talking about, and I'm going to bring that context to our current situation. Now he's saying John chapter one, John chapter four. He is talking about in verse one, beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. Say with me, test the spirits. Yes. Again, say with me, test the spirits. Yes. Again, say with me, test the spirits. Yes. Whether they are of God yes. or not. That's what you're going to test. Because, why, why, why? Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. I want to tell you something. In the last days, there are spirits out there. Here, John is talking about the spirit of Antichrist. Spirits are out there. Spirits are out there. In the current situation, there is a spirit of fear out there. And John is saying to the the believers, he's saying, you are of God, little children. You have overcome them. Who is them? The spirit. <laughs> oh, come on, clap and give God the glory. Amen. Listen, I want to tell everybody who's a believer watching on the TV, watching in the Facebook, I want to tell you, you are of God, little children. And because you are of God, you have overcome them, the spirits that are in the world. Hallelujah. Tap your neighbor and say, I have overcome the spirit of fear. I have overcome the spirit of fear. You know why you have overcome the spirit of fear? Why did you overcome him? Why have you overcome? How? That is how. Why have you overcome? See, God is saying to you, you have overcome. Yes. But what is the reason? The reason is you are of God. Yes. Yes. It is simple. Come on, tap yourself and say, wake up. Yes. Wake up. Yes. Wake up. Yes. You are of God. You have been begotten of God. You have been born again by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of the testimony. Yes. You Are you listening to it? Yes. 
We have a great physician. Amen. We have a great physician. And this great physician is greater than COVID-19. This great physician is greater than the death that he can bring. This great physician is greater than the interstitial disease. This great physician is greater.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are born of God. Thank you. You are born of God. Now, take time and let it sink in your heart. Maybe you have been wandering, wandering in the streets. Maybe you have done a bunch of sin in your past. Maybe they are all tormenting you. But let me tell you today, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are born of God. If you are born of God, let me tell you, you are an overcomer because the Father in heaven is an overcomer. You know, when my, when my son comes with me, wherever I go, he does not want like to be called Dr. Sunny's son. He likes to hide. <laughs> but he tries a lot hiding, but everybody when they look at him, they will know, hey, is this your son? <laughs> you know why? He's born of me. <laughs> When he was young, he tried to put a little bit of bleach on his skin, tried to change the skin color. <laughs> Did it work? <laughs> no, because he has a genetic system that is of me. Yes. I want to tell you that you have a genetic system that is of God. Read it one more time. Having been born again. Oh, tap your neighbor and say, 
you have been born again. Having been born again, huh? Having been born again, not of corruptible seed. Not of corruptible seed. But incorruptible. Oh my God! Through the word of God, through the word of God, lived and abides forever. Hallelujah! You're not born by corruptible seed. You're born again. How? By an incorruptible seed. That is the word of God. Amen. That is the word of God. Yep. That's right. You have the very life of God in you. Yeah. That's right. Amen. You have the very life of God in you. That's right. You have the very power of God in you. Because you are born again, not by perishable seed, but by imperishable seed. And that is the word. Tap your neighbor and say, there is an imperishable seed within me. You know what does imperishable mean? Incorruptible means it cannot be destroyed. It cannot be corrupted. It cannot be altered. It cannot be defective. It will not be defective because the power that is in you, the word of God that has been planted within you when you are born again, hey, the word and say, I have overcome. I have overcome. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's time to overcome every spirit that is challenging you. And it's time to overcome the spirit of fear that is plaguing our, our community. It is time to overcome what the enemy has planned. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. Amen. Amen. Hello. Three things are happening in the last days. Three things. How many of you believe we are in the last days? Yes. Amen. Oh yeah. We are in the last days. Oh, hallelujah. Three things happening. Happening. Are you ready for three scriptures? Yes. Okay. Are you ready? We are already at 12 o'clock. Is that okay? Yes. All right. We're going to take these three scriptures and then we're going to pray for each other. Is that all right? Amen. Okay. Amen. The first thing I want you to turn with me is in... 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Chapter 3. 2 Timothy. Chapter 3. Verse 1. I want to put certain perspective on the last days because I want you to recognize this. Now you're having COVID-19. A few years from now you're going to have something else come up. It's just going to keep coming up. Because why? Because that's what the world is going into. That's right. exactly. 2 Timothy 3.1 But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. The word perilous times is actually harsh times. Difficult times. In the last days, this is what's going to come. Before COVID-19 came, we had MERS. Before that, we had SARS. Before that, we had Ebola. Then we had Zerka. We had viruses upon viruses kept coming into this world. Now why? Because it has already, you know, it has been predicted this is going to come. Because we are in the perilous times, hard times, harsh times. We are. Savage. Savage times. And the reason is very simple. The Bible talks.
talks about the reason. Many people say, oh, this is because it's just another blip in the society. There are so many people talk like that. They say, oh, this is nothing, Dr. Sunny. This came here, the demonic play came. Everything is the same thing. Comes again and again, but we're going to be okay. No, this is more deadlier. Don't underestimate what is coming against you. Take precautions. Wash your hands. Follow some common sense. Tap your neighbor and say, common sense. Common sense. But know this, that in the last days, the realest time will come. Why? For, because, men will be lovers of themselves. The reason why perilous times are coming is because men will love themselves. They will quit loving God. They will quit loving each other. They will love themselves. Oh, people will tell me, oh, no, 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 we love each other. But let me tell you, simple indicator for loving yourself is how many selfies you take. You go there, keep clicking, keep clicking. What? You love yourself. And because people are loving themselves, the Bible says harsh times will come. Because they are loving themselves, listen, verse 5 says, they will have a form of godliness, but deny its power. They will say, reading Psalm 91 will not protect you. They will say, going to church and trusting this God, is it going to save anybody? That is the reason perilous times are coming. Men will be lovers of themselves. You know, when the selfie stick came out, that was a hot seller. Everywhere in the world. Everywhere you go, you had a selfie stick. Everybody was carrying a selfie stick and running around. You know why? They love themselves. They love themselves. Tap your neighbor and say, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Love God. Love God. Love God. Love God. Love God. Come on, say with me. The first thing that's going to happen is perilous times. In the last days, you're going to have perilous times because men will be lovers of themselves. The enemy will come when people start loving themselves. Sickness will come. Tragedy can come. Storms can come. Earthquakes can come. But when the enemy is bringing something against humanity, I want to tell you, God is up to something. Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! Turn with me to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. We have read this again and again in this church. Acts 2, 17. And it says, And it shall come to pass in the last day, says the Lord, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Tap your neighbor and say, the Lord is saying I will pour out my spirit. The Lord is saying I will pour out my spirit. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord is rising up a standard against him. When the enemy is bringing every kind of harsh climate, let me tell you, God is saying, I am not idle up there in heaven, my son. I am pouring out my Holy Spirit.
problem of COVID-19 is in the Holy Spirit. Unless some scientists out there learn to connect with the Holy Spirit, you will not come up with a solution. When the enemy is throwing a perilous time, God is pouring his spirit upon all flesh. Amen. How many of you are receiving that spirit yes. every day? Yes. Hallelujah. 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 You know, you know, I was I was praying and I was asking the Lord, and suddenly the Lord said, You know, son, the spirit of the last days is the Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> You know, we identify the last days by the Antichrist out there. We identify the last days with the trouble out there. But the Lord is saying, I am identifying the last days because my spirit is out there. <laughs> the last days is the day that starts when the Holy Spirit came to the earth. And the last days will continue until the Holy Spirit is taken out of the earth. It is the last days. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I will pour out my spirit mm -hmm. in the last days. Tap your neighbor and say, Have you received his spirit? Have you received his spirit? It is there, it is there, it is coming, it is coming. Every time, every time when we worship, it is coming. You know, the Lord is saying, I will pour out my spirit. There is one baptism of the Holy Spirit, and there is many fillings of the Holy Spirit. The apostles gathered together and prayed, and boom, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. With every challenge from the government, that is a new filling. will come but my friend in the last days my God is up to some amazing things Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 All, all, all fresh Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. now turn with me to the third scripture I'm gonna be done wow this is the shortest message I'm bringing up <laughs> <laughs> the third scripture Hebrews chapter 1 Hebrews chapter 1 Hebrews chapter 1 Verse 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. What happens in the third? So first thing is, in the last days, perilous times will come. Second thing I wanted you to see, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit. Oh, hallelujah. No one can stop my pouring out. No one can hinder me from pouring out. I will not be stingy pouring out. I will pour out my spirit upon all. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 and verse 2. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, but in these last days. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his son. Yeah. Tap your neighbor and say, by his son. By by his son. son. Tap the person on the side and say, do you know his name? You know his his name. name. Yeah. Oh, come on. Can you shout with me? His name is Jesus. Jesus. In the last days, we have one message to say. He is no longer talking about prophets. He is no longer talking about Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. No, he's talking about Jesus. Amen. There is one message that comes out of my lips if I am in India. Here, yeah, one message comes out of my lips when I am in America. There is one message that comes out of my lips if I am in Africa. And that message is Jesus saves. Hallelujah. Jesus heals. Jesus delivers. 
Jesus is everything. His name is Jesus. Stop talking about anything else. Stop talking about that one name. That is about every name. In the last days, God said, I am not going to talk to prophets anymore. I don't need an Isaiah. I don't need a Jeremiah. I need Jesus. Tap your neighbor and say, Jesus is here. There is one name that we should utter. There is one name that we should shout. There is one name that we should worship. There is one name that we should exalt. And that name is Jesus! I want you to remember this. God does speak through prophecy. But he has spoken through his son. Amen. Yes. Now, remember that. Hallelujah. Every prophecy that you get is not compared to what he has spoken Amen. through his son. I want to tell you something. Jesus is the word in the last days. Amen. He is the word in the last days. I was in I was I was in, in, in uh, Punjab, India. I was in India and we had this this three thousand people gathered in the last day. And all I could say was that one day. Hallelujah. I felt, I, I, I felt so limited, I felt so weak, I, I felt so insignificant, but I know there is one name he has given me to utter, and that name is Jesus! You know, I kept shouting, and I kept telling everybody to repeat that name, Jesus! Say with me, Jesus! Say with me, Jesus! People started coming out of the crowd and they wanted to Jesus. First time, first time, they have never been in a church, they have never been in a meeting. Somebody had brought them there and now they want this Jesus. Man, it was shaking my soul. When I saw 200 people, and in this crowd of people, there was two little ladies, they were carrying this giant of a man. He could not walk, he was dragging himself, having a little cane, and coming up to the front. We could all see he was a paralytic, he was paralyzed from the right side, and he kept coming, he kept coming because he wanted Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> when you speak that name, when you speak that name, every me shall.
the, 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 the shadow of Peter will fall on them. Yesterday, yesterday night, and, and this, this lady came up and she dragged my, she pulled my hand, an elderly lady, probably around 70 years old, maybe. She was, she was having all kinds of deformity in the leg. She could not, she could not go there. She was kind of walking like that. And she came and pulled her hand because she wanted me to look at her. I turned around and she said, come on, I want to try. So I just laid my hands and then, that said, nothing happened. Nothing happened. She turned it off and she started walking like that. And slowly started going back. As she was going home, her pain left her. <laughs> As she was going home, the joints started to correct her. She began to cry. The doctors don't give you the last word. 
Your financier don't give you the last word. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. You know how today I just want to end with this. How many of you say, Lord, I want to receive, keep receiving the Holy Spirit that you're continuing to pour. Amen. Listen, this is something which I want you to remember this. The Holy Spirit has come, but the filling is continuing. Yes. You know, the Holy Spirit is so big. Somehow we, we, we downsized him. We downsized him. Yeah, he has come in to you. When you believed and received Jesus, but he's still coming. Yeah. Yeah. Still coming. Yeah. Still, oh my God. His presence. That is what the Bible says. You keep on receiving. We keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. Every time you pray, he's pouring out some more. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yes. Father God, we want to thank you. We want to thank you. You know, let's raise our hands and say, Jesus, Jesus. let me be filled with the spirit again and again. Again and again. Continuously. Hallelujah. 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 All right, now I'm asking this question. Who in your family is going to rise up and put the blood on your on your door? Because if that is you, I want you to raise your hand. You're saying I'm gonna be the leader. Then go ahead. It can be a man, it can be a woman, it can be a child. If that is you, I want you to raise your hand and I want you to say right now, you're going to make a decision, right? Come on, put your hands up. I don't want you to be ashamed. Come on, come on. Yes, yes, yes. There it is. There it is. There it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you. You're looking at our hands as we are raising up and we are saying, Father, just like the time of Egypt, Father, we are taking the blood that is already provided and then we are going to place it on our doorpost, Father, and we are going to declare that in the name of Jesus, in the blood of Jesus, you are our protector. You are our deliverer. You are our Jesus. You are our healer. You are our Lord sanctifier. You are our peace. You are our wisdom. You are our strength. You are our, our everything, Lord. Yes. Jesus, it is you that we need. Amen. Yes. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord.